Hello there and welcome to Complete Games with me, James. Hope you guys are all doing well. And we're back with the story of Ark and the final part of our read through from Gaius Marcellus Nerva. We've been through all of the other survivor notes on the island map and this one's going to finish it off. So sit back, relax and enjoy the final explorer notes from Gaius Marcellus Nerva. The incident with the convoy was no fluke. The rider has returned, this time with plenty of warning. Reports of some beast queen joining the forces of the sharks reached my ears days before the siege. Her ranks have swelled since the convoy, but there is no doubt it's her. Not only did she help break the siege, but for the first time in existence, the new legion is in full retreat. This cannot continue. I will not allow it. I will conquer the sharks as I will conquer the entire Ark. But first I must destroy this so-called queen. Li Mei Yin, the Beast Queen of the Jungle, that's the name of my foe. It's a name that I have already grown weary of, but soon I will never hear it again. Turns out that she is a mercenary not beholden to any tribe, including the Painted Sharks. So as satisfying as it might be, I need not actually defeat her. I simply need to divorce her from her employers, and I know exactly how to do that. The seeds of my victory are already planted. The Beast Queen is no longer a concern, it was a simple matter really. A small team of legionnaires planted explosives in the shark's camp in the dead of night while leaving hers conspicuously untouched. Predictably, the explosions drew the Beast Queen's attentions, but the sharks mistook her advance for an enemy attack. After that, it was only a matter of time before they parted ways. With that barbarian removed from the conflict, this land war will end shortly. I've already pushed the sharks out of legion territory. Soon we will face them where they are strongest, the open sea. After taking the painted shark's last foothold on the mainland, this war has turned into one of attrition. While I construct a proper fleet, the shark's resources will continue to dwindle and my fires will continue to harass their main compound. When we finally stage our invasion, their spirits will be broken and their storehouses empty. In the meantime, I've been investigating the island's potential for naval warfare. Some creatures can carry small ballista platforms on their back, making them a curious sort of warship. I'm interested to see how they fare. Hopefully the sharks can offer a skirmish or two before their wheels break completely. Today she'll live forever in the annuals of history. Today I raise the new legion's flag above the painted shark's battered fortress. And in that moment, my empire was truly born. In that moment, the new legion became the dominant power on the island. With that in mind, I've given my troops three days respite to celebrate our victory. Though I shall not take part, my work is never done. I mustn't lose sight of my true goals. Only when I've brought this island into a new age shall I be content. Only then I shall rest. When my scouts reported that they had finally found Rockwell's compound, I set out to meet him at once. While that meant delegating matters that others might find more pressing, I did not hesitate. Minds like Rockwell's are a precious resource on this island. To have him as an advisor would be invaluable. Whether Rockwell accepts my offer or not, my visit has already paid dividends. Apparently, he has spent some time researching the massive obelisks on the island and theorises that they may hold great power. If there is any chance that said power can be wielded, then I must learn all I can about them. These obelisks are fascinating. Apparently, Rockwell has managed to coax a response out of one of them with an offering of some kind. Could it be that they are some grand monument to the gods? If I appease them with a sacrifice, will that grant me their power? Yes. Of course, Janus may have chosen me to rule the island by bringing me here, but I must prove my worth to the other gods by completing this ritual. Well, now that I have Rockwell's counsel at my back and call, I shall pass the trial with ease. Then the power of the gods will be mine to command. After studying my scouts' reports, I have concluded that few tribes remain who can successfully resist the new legion's march. However, the island's snowy tundras are a matter of concern. 
the dominant tribe in the region, the Howling Wolves, are known to be fierce fighters. More importantly, a prolonged invasion would prove nigh impossible in that weather. Yes, for now I shall avoid the frozen north. Instead, I will annex the smaller tribes, consolidate the new legion's holdings and investigate the obelisks with Rockwell. Perhaps their power can solve my northern conundrum. The new legion needs a true capital, one that embodies our strength and grandeur. I realised it while recalling my first day in Rome. My hometown in Numidia had its wonders, but it could never match the splendour of that great city. I was in constant awe. Most of this island are consumed by the present, their immediate needs and struggles, yet a new generation will live within our walls one day. When they see what their forefathers have built, I want them to be as inspired as I was. I want to show them that no matter where they are born, their destinies are theirs for the taking. I have received disturbing news. Apparently the Beast Queen has resurfaced, with an even larger contingent than before, and she is on the move. Worse still, she's travelling directly towards one of the obelisks. I can think of no worse scenario than the obelisks falling into those barbaric hands. She's always been a nuisance, but with their power, the Beast Queen would pose a dire threat to everything I have built. I must immobilise my main force and move to intercept her at once. The future of this island may hang in the balance. When my army arrived at the obelisk, I feared we were too late. The Beast Queen was nowhere to be found. I was about to order a search of the area when I was blinded by a flash of light. Suddenly the barbarian horde was right before us and battle was joined. Though the savage possessed a fearsome new monster, it attacked ally and enemy alike. If anything, his presence made the slaughter more complete. By the end, the Beast Queen's forces were annihilated and she herself had fled with mortal wounds. At last, her threat is ended. Interestingly, we also captured an acquaintance of Rockwell's during the battle. Perhaps she knows something about the obelisks that Rockwell does not. Walker had told us to expect some kind of monster after activating the obelisk, but I had never imagined that we would battle one of Ceres' dragons. No, that's not right. It was too colossal and wild for even a god's chariot. I doubt Diana herself could control it, and yet the new legion felled it. It cost the lives of many men, and even more beasts, but it was worth the sacrifice. According to Walker, the third key we have acquired may allow me to open this cave she speaks of. Then the power of the obelisks and this very island will be mine to command. Damn those barbarians. They've smelled our weakness. Between our battles with the Beast Queen and the Dragon, the New Legion's main force has been distracted and depleted. Lesser tribes have taken advantage by raiding our camps and seizing territory that we claimed with our own blood and sweat. Fine, let them have their temporary victories. Let them imagine they have inflicted real wounds upon us. When I obtain the power of the obelisks, they will pay for every blade of grass they have taken from me. With that power, I will make them no true regret. My men are uneasy. News reached us that the Howling Wolves are on the march, heading straight for the heart of New Legion territory. Some want to turn back and defend our home. I understand their instinct, but they lack foresight. Only Rockwell has the strength of mind to see my vision. We are nearly to the cave. Once I hold the power it contains, I can use it to crush the Howling Wolves and their petty forces. Whatever gains they make will be erased. I'll unite the entire island in a single glorious battle. Soon they'll see. Everyone will see. I am the island's destined emperor. I am its destined god. I had not expected to battle another monster, much less one so powerful. Yet here I stand, victorious. My men lay dead. My beasts lay dead. Yet I stand. Even Rockwell has never seen anything like this place. Surely the power of the obelisks is here waiting for a worthy champion to wield it. With it, I will not need beasts or men. 
His power alone will win me this island. I need only to find it and claim what is mine. Praise Janus for taking me here. Praise Mars for lending me his strength. I claim victory in your names. Nothing. How can there be nothing? I've searched ceaselessly, yet I find nothing. I sacrifice my men, my kingdom, everything. I have nothing left to give. Everything I've bled for is gone. For what? For of you? What trickery is this? What is this place? Am I a victim of some divine joke? I don't understand. I served the Emperor loyally. Why would Janus pull me from his service if not to bring order here? I've cried out for answers, but the gods have never responded. They have abandoned me. All I hear is my own voice, echoing off these cursed halls. Betrayed, destitute and alone. And that concludes our Explorer Notes read-through. We've covered all of the survivors from the island map, and I have had requests to continue this on into Scorched Earth and Aberration with our playthrough. The second part of my Complete Arc series starts later this month, and we're going to continue with Scorched Earth. It's certainly a long journey, and there is a lot of lore to go through. Let me know down in the comments if you'd like me to do perhaps a more condensed version or an overview of all four survivors and perhaps pinpoint some of the areas on the map that I think would be of note and interest. I'm pretty sure that Rockwell went spelunking on Carnivore Island, although the drawing is of the artifact of the Skylord. So I think there's a lot of stuff I could talk about and go over with all of these notes and perhaps make a little bit of a another extra so let me know down below if you'd like me to do that and perhaps i'll put that one as an idea to one side as always thank you very much for watching don't forget to subscribe if you're new here but until next time i'm james from complete games and i'll see you